Why is it so important to get up early? Some of y'all don't want it. That's why you ain't got it. I don't sleep when I'm tired. I sleep when I'm done. The average millionaire wakes up at 4 a.m. So it started off 4 o'clock in the morning where I'd start and I'd start with my cardio, then I'd have breakfast, and then I would go to the gym, and then I'd go to work. Some of y'all have no idea what 4 a.m. looks like. Why would you not wake up at 4.30? Because you're too busy sleeping in. I'm pretty sure I wake up earlier than all of you. We don't sleep when we're tired, we sleep when we are... <laughs> too busy hitting the snooze button multiple times. Excuses sound best to the person that's making them up. And if we can really be honest, some of y'all don't even go to bed until about 4 a.m. If you can get up before the rest of the world is awake, right? Before the enemy's awake, you can get so much done. You're so much more productive. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Wake your ass up. And then they ask me, well, why are you up so early? <laughs> Take responsibility to make your life happen. Awaken the beast inside. Wake up at 4 a.m. So I begin to tell myself there must be a reason. When you have something to do, when you have someone to love, when you have something to look forward to, when you get up in the morning, see people who have something to look forward to don't need an alarm clock because they have a reason for being. You, if you want to have one of the best lives in the world, which is you live on your terms, then you have to pay your dues to get there. You've decided that you're not going to allow your circumstances to define you. You've decided that you're not going to allow the events, the things, the people, life, determine who you become. You got a problem with your life. You got a problem with your environment. Do something about it. If you want more freedom in your life, you have to have more discipline. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. You decided that you're not going to go through life being a whiner, being a complainer. That you're going to take responsibility for what it is that you want to create. The greatest ability that God has given humankind above the animals is the ability to choose. I'm not going to sit here and tell you life is going to be Ron Howard happy days every day. It's not going to be that way. Matter of fact, it's probably going to be the opposite. You see, the enemy is going to throw everything he has in his toolbox at you. Now, he can't stop you himself, but his objective is to get you to stop you. This message is for the struggle, for all those going through trials and tribulations. People in this world are going to fool you disappoint you, turn their back on you. The closest around you are gonna give up on you. And when things hit the fan, everybody's gonna run. You're gonna look around and you're gonna be all alone. I'm just keeping it real with you because somebody out there needs to hear what I'm saying. This ain't a motivational video. Man, this is life. This ain't no game to me and I know what you're going through. And I'm going to speak life into you right now. Nothing, listen to me, nothing can stop you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. And that is all you need. There's a power inside of you that you can only discover when you are truly alone. Just as the waves on a beach shore come in and out people will do the same relationships are like music and you should never make music with anybody who doesn't understand 
appreciate and value your lyrics. Sometimes you just gotta let these people go. You gotta know your worth. Sometimes you just gotta let them people go. You gotta stop chasing people who don't appreciate you. Sometimes in this life, champion, you gotta remind the world just who you are. And you don't do this by telling them with your mouth. You tell them with your actions. You make your actions speak loud and proud to who you are. Don't let the world convince you that you're nobody. You're somebody who just don't know it yet. Do you hear what I'm saying, champion? I'm speaking to the champion in you. Rise, champion. I'm here to talk to you about you. I'm here to talk to you about compromising your life. When are you going to stop compromising your life for what everybody else wants you to do? It is your life. Stop trying to sit there and trying to impress everybody. Stop trying to be everybody's friend. Stop trying to make everybody's days. If you want to do that, then you should give out lollipops and candy. But that's not what life is made of. That's not what life's about. Your life is about taking full advantage of your happiness. And it's just that. It is your happiness. Stop compromising your life for other people. Do not let anybody tell you what, where, why you should love or like something. Just go out there and do it. Stop compromising your life for people who really don't care if you succeed or fail. And that's a fact. You have to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone, go out there and tackle obstacles, goals that you want to achieve. Not your mom, not your dad, not your girlfriend, not your brother, not your sister, not your kids. You got to do what you want. You will not be a good father, you will not be a good husband, you will not be a good wife if you are unable to love yourself. You have the same 24 hours that the billionaire has. You have the same 24 hours that the bum has. What are you gonna do with your time? Enough's enough, man. I'm sick and tired of it. Stop compromising who you are for everybody else. I am no longer shy, broken, weak because you gave me belief. You can achieve anything you want because now you believe it. I am no longer a sheep living in disbelief. Disbelief that I am not great, that I am not strong, that I am not worthy of this greatness. I am amazing. I am phenomenal. I am capable of all things. And so are you. Oftentimes we allow everyone to dictate what's valuable in our lives. It's because of you I now see the light. You're an unstoppable force of nature. I am in control of my own destiny. I hold a pen that writes my own story. I come to you vulnerable. You give me armor make me invincible. You're no longer allowed to ask why. Why me? You now say, try me. This wisdom shall set you free. Free from the chains that hold your imagination, your greatness, captive. Anything you put in front of me, I shall break that I shall destroy. You have the power bestowed upon you to be great. You now have no excuse not to be great, not to be amazing. You hold the gift of greatness in your heart. When adversity hits you, get back up. You're no longer weak. You're no longer misguided, shy, broken, lost, vulnerable. You are confident. You are focused. You are strong. You are invincible. Now you have the power. And this is why I come to you. Most people don't reach their dream, not because of failure. Most people don't live their dream because they give up. You see, it's not the failure that stops us, but that most stop at their first failure. Those who succeed don't stop at one failure. They don't stop at 10 failures. They don't stop at 100, 1,000, or a million. They say, this is my goal. 
and I will do whatever it takes to achieve it. I will learn the lessons from any failures. I will learn faster. I will work harder. I will work smarter. And I will not quit until my dream is a reality. That's the difference between success and failure. Failure is a massive part of being able to be successful. You have to get comfortable with failure. Yet you have to actually seek failure. Failure is where all of the lessons are. You know, when you go to the gym and you work out, you're actually seeking failure. You want to take your muscles to the point where you get to failure because that's where the the adaptation is. That's where growth is. Successful people fail a lot. They fail a whole lot more than they succeed. They extract the lessons from the failure and they use that, the, the energy and they use the wisdom to come around to the next phase of success. You gotta take a shot. You have to live at the edge of your capabilities. You gotta live where you're almost certain you're gonna fail the reason for practice. Practice is controlled failure. You're getting to your limit, getting to your limit, getting to your limit. You can't lift that. You can't do that. You Until you get to the point that all of a sudden your body makes the adjustment and then you can do it. Failure uh, actually helps you to recognize the areas where you need to evolve. So fail early, fail often, fail forward. Failure makes winners stronger. Failure makes winners hungrier. But it makes most give up. It makes most feel worthless. Winners don't enjoy failure. But they would never let failure stop them. Next time you encounter failure, you got to remember every great thing on this planet is here because the Creator learned what did work, but learned more from what did not work. When we are kids, we don't stop at failure. When we first learn to ride a bike, it's failure after failure. We get knocked down time after time, but we get up and push forward until we achieve our goal of riding the bike. But then we get old and most of us get weak. We are too soft to get back on the bike. We come up with excuses. It must not be for me. No, you just soft. No, you just lazy. Tell yourself the truth. Get back on the bike. Learn why you fail. And make sure you don't fall again. Make sure you are stronger for having the lesson. You know, it's always a little bit frustrating to me when, when people have a negative relationship with failure. Fail early, fail often, fail forward. Sometimes your life won't turn out how you plan it. It turns out how you work for it. How you wake up and you chase that dream every single morning. It's what you give your time and your energy to that takes you to the next level. You see, I witnessed the death of my mother, the death of my grandfather, the incarceration of my father, and still I stood. Because when I walked in those projects, I realized one thing, I realized this, that my dream never lived down there. I realized that everything I ever dreamed of lives in the sky and I must jump every single day to go reclaim what's mine. And that's royalty. You see, many of us believe that just because our father was a drug dealer and our uncle was a drug dealer, that that is our life and that is our forever. But I want you to know something. That is only a lesson to show us to be something more than what they thought we can be. You see, when a family tree is dying, all you have to do is take care of the roots. And if the roots is too dead to bring the tree back alive, you plant another one. Young king and queen, I'm sorry, but we live in a 
generation today where you're going to have to grow up right now. You're going to have to be phenomenal in everything you do because everyone in the world is chasing greatness. And what do you do when a man is going 100 miles per hour and you haven't even started the engine yet? The best gifts come from the bottom. They say, well, why you want to be great? I don't want to be great for me. I want to be great so the Project Babies can look in the mirror and say, I am too. That flower grew in the same streets that I grew up in. That rose rose up through that concrete and so can I. It's a mentality. Roses can grow in the projects if you take care of the soil. It don't matter how big the house is, baby. It's the love inside of it. Take care of your community. Take care of your brothers and sisters. Hold cowards accountable for what they put in your neighborhoods. Put your crown back on your head. Let the world know your name. King and Queen. When they sleep, you gotta grind when they walk. You gotta grind when you do not feel like it. And this in all areas in life, school, sports, your religion, consistency. It's the tunnel to greatness. Consistency will turn an ordinary man into something he never thought he can be. I want you to look in the mirror, young kings and queens today. If you're growing up with nothing and you're growing up with, without, I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to say these words. I want you to say that I am royalty. I am more of my generational curses. I am more than my drug addict father. I am more than my incarcerated uncle. No, I'm not better than them. But I want to do better for them. I want to give our last name a legacy that will be remembered forever. That when people speak of it, people will smile automatically. See, this type of greatness I'm talking about, I'm talking about when I die. They can't even fit another body in the church. Because what I gave the world. You see, you see all these men standing on top of the world. You think they're special. You think they're everything, but you don't know what they did to get there, king and queen. Are you willing to sell your soul for material things? Because right now, we're losing the battle to the evil. And I'm telling you, young kings, I need you to come back. I need you, I need you to come back to the kings and queens that I know you are as great citizens. You know, young kings that walk in the room with his pants pulled up and young queens that cover her body and only show her face because she knows she's beautiful and she loves the skin she in. You see, I want to bring us back to that. I want to eliminate the N-I-G-G-A mindset and bring the king mindset because that's what we were born of. Royalty. You see, kings and queens, life is like one man standing on one single street. And the creator says, stay in your lane. If you stay in this lane, you will continue to ride. But if you pay attention to all the other cars, you will crash. What do I mean? I mean, don't pay attention to the next man. Pay attention to the best man. See, the best man is whoever you believe he is because the mind has power. Your mouth and your words 
have power. I became a speaker by walking into a school after having suicidal thoughts, ready to blow my brains out. I wanted to give some children something that they can take forever, something that can last forever, something that can push them to the next level, and then I wanted to die. But God did a funny thing when I walked out that school in Redding, Pennsylvania. Five minutes walking down that street, I get a phone call and they say, Mr. Hollis, how much do you charge to speak? And that was the day my career started. Since then, I have done nothing but speak. Since then, I've paid every bill with nothing but what I make from what I speak. Since then, I've had a meal every single night. Since then, I've met beautiful, kind people that helped me go to the next level. Since then, since then, you get my point. God is amazing. See, I thought it was about time that somebody came to the world and they gave people true words. You know, not just talk to the people with the big wallets and the big purses. I'm talking about the people that have nothing. I'm talking about the people who can barely get cough syrup and barely feed their babies. I'm talking about the mothers left alone. I'm talking about the fathers that's lost that never had a father and had a baby and still don't know how to be a father and they call the deadbeat every single day. See, the thing about this world, they believe that you can just vanish somebody into something, but I want you to know something. With God, put his hands on it, you cannot vanish anything. Because that's the same man that turned dirt into man. See, we tend to forget these things. We tend to forget how extraordinary our father is. See, you got powers and we like him. You got to awaken that power. You got to bring it to life and you got to show the world that this is real. People always ask me the question. They say, Will, when have you found what you love to do? I say, you find what you love to do when it becomes easy to you and amazing to the world. See, I hope you're listening to me today because I'm giving you my heart. I'm giving you my soul. I'm giving you what they call real motivation. See, no, I will never come to you kings and queens with that lions, tigers, and bears because I'm not a lion, tiger, or bear. I was born in the jungle, though. But we made it up. Because you know what they say about real lions? We take over the pack. And we lead it. See, that's the thing. We got a lot of lions out there in those neighborhoods, drug dealers, killers, whatever you want to call yourself. And I want you to know, King, you special. You misguided, but you special. I know you grew up without a father and your mother left you and nobody ever loved you and nobody ever told you you can be anything and you believed it. But I want to tell you this, that you are phenomenal, you are a king, you come from royal blood, you stand on the tip top of pyramids, you are royalty, king. You are a light, you are a star. The question is, do you believe you are? Dale Carnegie said, most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. Arise, champion. Now, perseverance transforms average, everyday people into world champions. So the key to victory, the key to success is never giving up. And in order for you to do that, arise, champion. you will need a strong why to prevail, a strong reason to keep going. You see, the more difficult your obstacles are to overcome, the more you must keep your reasons for succeeding in front of you. Vince Lombardi said, the difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but a lack of will. Success is not about how you look on the outside. Arise, champion. You might look like a Lamborghini, mean and clean, every way you go. But see, I'm interested in what's under the hood. Because that's what really matters. When life hits you with that brick, and you get knocked down on that mat. And I'm talking to the Linda Rouseys of the world, the ones that have been knocked down once and twice. And everybody out there is calling you a failure.
you. Everybody out there saying it's over. What are you gonna do? Rise, champion. I don't even think they should be able to call you a champion until you've been beat. Because even losers keep going when they're winning. But when you get hit with that brick and you own that mat on your back, rise, champ. Then we separate the cream from the crop. Only when you're down 25 points on the biggest stage, like Tom Brady, and you come back, can we call you the greatest of all time? Abraham Lincoln said, I am not concerned that you have fallen. I am concerned that you arise. Champions make adjustments, not excuses. Get up! The ground, the mat, being on your back is no place for a champion. Get up! Arise, champion. Now you at that crossroads. The decision you make now will ultimately define your legacy. I'm speaking to the Tiger Woods of the world. Each loss, each setback, each heartbreaking disappointment will try to disguise itself as failure. But it's all a lie. The way of the warrior. Champion eyes, get back up, my spirit cries, fear dies, choked out by the scream, the desire to climb, and live out my dream, take it for the team, discipline reigns, I want it too bad to listen to the pain, I'm a winner, to God be the glory. Tragedy and setbacks, an inspirational story. Warriors like me, we were strategically designed for the struggle. Many before me gave up and quit. Acted all bad <laughs> to the first time they got here. But see, blood don't scare me. I fear not death. Whatever it takes, champion, to be the best of the best. I was made for war. I cry out to heaven, blessed and unstoppable, an immortal legend. Climb, I say, the unclimbable mountain. Kicking and punching, I just keep on pounding. I found it. That deep desire to win. I remember defeat and I say, never again. See, warriors like me, we were born and strategically designed for the struggle. The way of the warrior, champion eyes, get back up, my spirit cries. Fear dies, choked out by the screams. The desire to climb and live out my dreams. Take it for the team. Discipline reigns. I want it too bad to bow to pain. I'm a winner. To God be the glory. Tragedy setbacks. An inspirational story. Many before me gave up and quit. Acted all bad to the first time they got in. Blood don't scare me. Death, whatever it takes, champion, to be the best of the best. Climb, I say, the unclimbable mountain. Kicking and punching, I just keep on pounding. Because I'm a warrior, and that's what we do. I'm Billy Owls Brooks, blessed and unstoppable. To God be the glory.
Thank you.